Hey, how's it going? Hey, happy Saturday. Oh, audio's working. Yes. All right. All right. So how's it going? Hey, happy Saturday. Uh, thanks for joining the stream. How's everyone doing? Uh, first of all, I usually start off with the weather. So let's start with weather. Weather has been taking some pretty crazy turns, at least here in the Midwest. Uh, it, I'm in the north, north Midwest, but uh, it's been crazy. It's been uh, either a lot of snow or really windy or really cold and then getting back kind of warm again. Uh, I looked at our forecast for the next, I don't know, four or five days and it's mid 30. So I'm OK with that. I'm OK with the slow melt. I don't like it when it gets <laughs> like super warm all of a sudden and everything melts. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the slow melt. So mid 30s, upper lower 40s for me is perfect to like ease our way into spring so that things don't get flooded and yeah, all the things that come along with that. So how are you guys doing? Uh, what can I help with today? Um, if you're new to the stream, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, um, if you've never been here before, it's it's way different than <laughs> what I do on YouTube. So if you've never been here before, it's, it's basically a live stream where we talk about and share things that we're working on, tech related, non-tech related, anything. Uh, the reason why I did this way back when, when I started was because when I first got into uh, uh, streaming, I, I, I realized that, um, you know, I, I do all these geeky, techy things and uh, I never had anyone to share them with. So I just started sharing them on the stream and other people started talking about what they were doing and what they were working on and we've been doing it ever since. So, um, so yeah, a little, little background there. Um, but yeah, so I, and, you know, I've been, uh, I've been busy. We've all been busy. Things are crazy, crazy uh, in, in many different ways. Um, last, uh, week I just decided, to, uh, well, it's been in my backlog for a long time. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. You found the light mode already. Ooh. Yeah. I added a few more. That one's, that one's pretty light. That one's pretty light. So I added a couple of more, uh, themes. If you're like, what the heck is he talking about? And why are his lights white? Uh, and very bright. It's because um, because uh, it, it, there's this thing called channel points. You can earn channel points in the stream. Uh, channel points you earn just by being here, uh, possibly by chatting. I don't know what it is. You guys are finding them all. I like it. Awkwardly dark in here now. <laughs> now it's a now it's a it's a it's a light war. I like it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, long story short, um, if, if you're new to the stream, you earn channel points just by being here. I wrote a whole bunch of code and a whole bunch of stuff to all of my lights to control the lights that are in here. That code is actually self-hosted inside of my Kubernetes cluster that's inside of my home lab. Uh, and it's wired up to Twitch. So I wrote everything end to end just so you guys can change the lights. Yeah, this is bright. This is like sci-fi bright. This is like I'm like in a spaceship or something. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, that is no air trimming brightness. It is pretty bright. Um, but anyways, um, you can earn points. There's a little button at the bottom. You can spend points, thousand points, change the light in my stream. Um, and I added two more this morning. I did a couple things to the stream. You'll see here in a little bit, but uh, two of those were light mode and dark mode. Light mode is awkwardly bright and dark mode is awkwardly dark. <laughs> so. So anyways, uh, man, you guys found those quick. I, I, I figured it'd be at least, you know, halfway into the stream before someone discovered them. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so anyways, uh, what I've been working on, uh, I, you guys probably saw it this morning. I, I it's just kind of a basic primer for some things I want to do in the future. Um, but uh, I realized that, you know, this whole entire time I've been talking about containers and spinning up containers. We've been using everyone else's containers, which, are, which is awesome. Like 20 times better than I can build. I built some okay ones. Uh, but, you know, uh, a, a billion times better than what I can normally build, uh, uh, um, you know, containers that we've been spinning up. And so I realized that, like, uh, there's some things I want to do in the future. I kind of have to lay down some foundational stuff every now and then to <laughs> popular or not, uh, just so I can refer back to it. Uh, but this past week was, uh, you know, kind of taking a step back and saying, like, how would I build a container from scratch, even though I have many, many times? Um, and so that's kind of what it was, just building a container from scratch. Um, you know, we kind of, uh, in that video, I lean into Nginx. So we get a lot of things for free and, uh, which you do most of the time with almost every single Docker image, cause they all inherit from some other base Linux image. Uh, so anyways, that's, that's what I've been doing. Just laying some groundwork for some future stuff. So it's easier for me to say, Hey, that's how I did that in the past. <laughs> but not only that, uh, people have asked too. uh, it, it was funny. Lots of questions came up in discord this week. Hey, I'm building my own Docker container. Uh, how do I do this? And I, I was so close to just saying like, 
can you wait a couple days? <laughs> uh, but I didn't, but I didn't. And I would never do that. I, I would help someone rather than say, hey, wait for this video to come out. Because uh, most of my videos are about helping people. And I've said this before too, I, I, I get my, I, I put, I try to push my content out as quickly as possible. Uh, not only video content, but if there's blog or help or anything else, I try to put that out there first. Like some of my Docker Compose files are out there before my videos even come out. Same with my Kubernetes files, those are out there already. Uh, Helm commands for everything. I put that out there and then when I get to it, uh, I'll, I'll get to it. So anyways, if you've never been here, that was a whole bunch of, whole bunch of intro stuff. Um, Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, there were lots of follows and there's lots of chat. We're going to get to chat. Uh, I usually read through every piece of chat I, I can. I try to keep the stream to uh, roughly an hour-ish. <laughs> ish. Uh, I don't want to make it too long. You know, mods involved. You guys are involved. Everyone's involved because it's a pretty, pretty active stream. Uh, so I don't want to tie everyone up for the whole day. So I, I usually write about an hour. Write about an hour. So... Uh, a couple of things. Let's get into. I, I'm doing some things different, so I gotta I gotta figure out how to do this first. First, let's get into uh, follows. So there's follows, there's resubs, there was uh, lots of things uh, right before I start and during uh, the intro. So real quick, I'll call these out. Rupert, 32, uh, Kirsunishi, uh, Tenor, Slive. Uh, thank you guys for the follow. Included null, resub, prime, seven months. Thank you so much. Included null, how's it going? Uh, that's better. Already a patron. Here's my prime sub too. Thank you so much. Thanks for spending your prime sub. Speaking of subs, thank you so much. Uh, OMGL Alexis, thank you so much for the prime sub. Yes, thank you. Well, yeah, I, I am excited. That wasn't a prime sub. This tier one, thank you so much. I appreciate it. But I, that, yeah, that other yes was my lights are flashing again. Something has been going wrong with that for, I don't know couple of streams and so I invested a ton of time in if trying to iron out some code you, you notice there's less spam in my chat now and there's some other things coming and along with those themes I spent about an hour and a half uh, this morning um, just kind of trying to tidy up some of my code because not all of it was working hey Helius Helius thank you for the prime sub thank you so much appreciate it appreciate it lights are flashing yes my snake light my snake my snake plant back there. He's getting so tall. I, it's one of the first things I bought when I first first started creating YouTube videos. He was like this big, and now he's like getting super tall. Anyways, that's enough about snake plants. Um, th then there was, hey, uh, Amarant. Amarant, thanks for the prime sub. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hype train, let's go. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, man, I uh, 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 real quick, let me call out the rest of the follows. Um, Oh my, oh my, OMGLM Alexis, thanks for the follow. Emma Rat, thanks for the follow. Uh, Tilly, Tilly D, thanks for the follow. Tilly, Tilly D, I'm, um, I like Tilly D, I'm gonna go with that. I was wondering, is the D, D E for Germany, but I, I'll just pronounce it phonetically. Um, and uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, Army, Army Rat. Sorry, was I saying Amy? I'm sorry, Army Rat. Thank you for the sub and the follow. Oh, you guys, man, quick follows, quick subs. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, let's get into chat. Let's see what you guys are working on. Let's see who was here first. Uh, I I know who was here first because I was doing some stuff. I know who was here first. Even if this hype train is is fa is covered, it ah, it's not covering it up because I was doing some tests. So Salvarius, Salvarius, thank you so much. Um, Let's see if this thing works. This thing works? Oh yeah, it does. Oh yeah, it does. Piece of geek, got it working. We were talking about this this morning and got it working. Um, so a little chat overlay. I've, I've seen it on Network Chuck's channel and I've seen it on, I'm not gonna lie, I've seen it on Network Chuck's, I've seen it on Tom Lawrence. And I'm like, man, YouTube has some sweet stuff. Like that is sweet chat overlay that YouTube uh, has for, for streaming. I wish I had that. I realized it's not even a YouTube thing. It's, it's, it's an open source project. Uh, that someone made that you can overlay chat. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give this a go. I fancied it up a little bit. I, I put my own spin on it with a little CSS. Not too much. So I'm web dev. Web dev. I, I'm a software engineer. I do a lot of different devs, but I do some web dev. So I'm like, I'm going to style this message and make it look kind of cool. It doesn't look great. That's about uh, 30 minutes of CSS. That's about all the CSS I could handle for this morning. So made that look a little bit okay. So anyways, gonna try something a little bit new, making it easier for you guys to read chat. And if you guys throw a message in there and I get to it, I'm just gonna highlight it and we're gonna talk about it. So Jim Chamberlain, dude, thank you so much. Dudes are coming out. That's how you know I'm having a good day when I start saying dudes. <laughs> if I ever say bro like I did last time, you can either smack me or you can be like, whoa, he's having a real good day. <laughs> last week a bro came out. I was like, I never even say bro, but somehow it came out. 
Uh, anyways, Jim Chamberlain, uh, thanks for the sub, Prime sub. Thank you so much. Um, Salvarius, all right. I don't know how I'm going to do this double scroll because I kind of have this chat window down here and then chat up there. Chat up there is just going to fly. Chat on the screen is where we're at right now. So we'll just let that go. Uh, let's see. Ace, uh, you are coming through. I, I, When you said that and I saw that, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, is my camera accidentally on? And I hopefully I'm not, like, picking my nose or something. I, mean, I wasn't doing that, but I was like, <laughs> got scared for a minute i think i think i was uh i think you just meant like hey the stream started and i was like oh what's going on uh salvarius great job on the video today tim thank you so much uh I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's it's not performing well but that's totally okay and totally expected like i said this is like foundational stuff for later uh i did put a ton of effort into it but uh, sometimes you have that so i, I appreciate it thank you so much I, and most uh, you know, it, it's such an older topic. I'm sure that most people know how to do this already, but again, laying some groundwork for the future. So, Flow Dash, woohoo, how's it going? Manny, hey, how's it going? Uh, PC Geek, oh, run as the ministry. I gotta figure out how to get these icons in here. I don't think that's possible, but I, maybe I can with some CSS magic. I already tried to figure out how to get like people's Twitch profile in there, couldn't figure it out. Because because uh, they're they're obfuscated because they're IDs for for I don't know web dev stuff. The image isn't really the image name; it's an image ID. So I got to write a ton of code to do it, or just be okay with the anonymous green person <laughs> avatar. OMGL Alexis gifted a tier one sub uh, to Linux Tips. Hey Linux Tips, uh, tier one to Linux Tips. Hey, uh, thank you for gifting a sub um, and Linux Tips. Enjoy your gifted sub for OMG OMGL. I'm just gonna go with Alexis. How about that, Alexis? Enjoy your gifted sub. Linux Tips, how's it going? Linux Tips it has tossed a couple of big hosts. The last uh, couple of streams, thanks for that big host last time. I was just looking at it the other day. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. How's it going, Linux Tips? And uh, Alexis, thank you so much for gifting a sub. There was a follow, a, a sub, and then a gifted sub. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. We got the early crew here today. Yeah, we do. There's 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 a couple of crews that come through. There's the there's the uh, Twitch notification crew, and then there's – well, there's actually a crew before that. There's the crew that knows I start at 3 o'clock Central. There's that crew. Then there's the Twitch notification crew because that goes out pretty early. And then there's the Discord notification crew, and then there's everyone else crew, which is me too because I'm usually kind of late. So <laughs> – Thank you. Hey, Crack Kitty. Hey, how's it going? Uh, great new video, Tim. Thanks for all you do. Hey, Crack Kitty. Thank you so much, man. How's it going? I don't mean to put another new and shiny thing out in front of you. I know you're probably still working on VLANs. That's tough. That's very important. If I can help you prioritize, focus on VLANs and network segmentation first. It's way more important than what I put out today. You have my permission to ignore it. No, I'm kidding. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Um, IOPS, IOPS, hi, how's it going? How are you? Geeky Ran, I might actually uh, stay for the stream today. Thank you so much. You've been you've been a busy man, busy man. If it's not plowing snow, it's a birthday party. So <laughs> how's it going, man? Uh, thanks for tossing out some, some inspiration too in Discord. Uh, I have a lot of it in my backlog. Keep pushing me because uh, the stuff you want to see is in my backlog. I just need to get to it. And uh, the more you talk about it, the more I want to do it. Uh, when I was in the shower, I was already thinking about, okay, how, how can I make this magic <laughs> if you don't know what i'm talking about some automation with with k3s uh that i've had planned for a while uh which automation platform is tbd <laughs> uh but yeah i, wa I want to make it magic for people but at the same time break down that magic and uh kind of show how the magic works and let you perform magic yourself that's a lot of magic but uh i'm okay with magic as long as you show me the source code <laughs> uh let's see uh including no hello from the uk how's it going good to see you hello from belgium school call thank you so much for being here cheers from atlanta georgia oh the names are a little bit different on here so i, I apologize ace ace awd uh cheers from atlanta how's it going um <laughs> salvarius uh from kentucky sigor hey how's it going uh ultra mark i don't know if do i click on these on everyone i'm, I'm gonna wait until uh I, I'll, I'll figure it out this is new this is new to me so i gotta figure it out uh but i'm gonna go with everyone uh Mongstad, hello from norway hello how's it going oh, i gotta move my phone away from uh my headphones i don't know if it's coming in the mic but there's a ton of feedback Every time I get notifications and texts, my my phone is just like <laughs> so. I apologize if you heard that. Um, let's see, Sigor, how uh, how's everyone doing? PC Geek, hello from the basement, uh, where my home lab man cave tool <laughs> workshop is. I have yeah, I, I I have one of those two. I kind of have two right now. This is this is like the other one. <laughs> uh, the basement is is one of two. Uh, this is one where I probably spend more time, but my basement is yet another one. Um, 
I love it. I love it down there. I need to spend more time in, in the basement where my server rack is. I also need to figure out cooling. I was talking about springs coming earlier. Pretty soon, I'm going to have to figure out a cooling solution. Uh, thus far, I've been able to kind of lean into these cold Minnesota weather winters, and uh, I've been getting passive cooling for, <laughs> for, for some months now. Pretty soon, i got to figure out some kind of active fan or something. Let's see, AceWD. Which one do I read? I'm going to read the bottom one. Uh, I've been waiting all week to talk to you. All right. Oh, gosh. Here, pressure's on. Uh, I've been watching your videos about setting up Rancher, and I'm stuck. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand. Currently, my Ubuntu VM is set up. Docker plus Rancher are running, uh, but the local nodes show no external IP for services to access containers. Do I set up my containers in here, or what's the updated process to set this thing up? Ace, good question. I, I This is yet another topic that's coming soon. I just am kind of waiting for the dust to settle. Um, anyways, uh, to address your question directly, there's a couple things. So Rancher, and this is what I'm going to talk about in a future video. Um, you know, Rancher is, a, a, I'll go kind of high level and then I'll address your specific problem. You know, Rancher is a, a, a <laughs> Kubernetes orchestration uh, platform. It's to help you orchestrate uh, Kubernetes. It's helped you to build clusters, uh, connect clusters, um, but you really shouldn't um, run uh, container workloads on that same cluster that that rancher is running on. Um, you you might have noticed if if you create a rancher cluster, it's called local, um, and that's well it depends on how you do it. Um, but if if you did it through Docker, it's called local, and you shouldn't. And nor will it be easy to actually get containers on there and run workloads. So that's one thing. So if you're if you're running rancher, treat that like a separate container, a separate. However, you have it spun up. If you have it on uh, uh, on Docker, it's going to be its own container. If you did it on Helm, so the uh, or Helm and Kubernetes on top of an existing Kubernetes cluster, you kind of need another cluster. Rancher wants to be on a cluster by itself. Anyways, um, so so that's one piece. The second piece is just in general, in general with Kubernetes. Um, uh, Kubernetes typically have a cloud load balancer in front of them. So take Rancher out of the picture. So Kubernetes. Uh, what they call uh, Kubernetes bare metal install means I'm installing it in my own infrastructure. That's Kubernetes bare, bare metal infrastructure. I'm not using a cloud provider because cloud providers also provide cloud load balancers. And so when you try to expose a port on a load balancer IP in Kubernetes in the cloud, it can communicate with that cloud loud, cl cloud cloak. Yeah. <laughs> cloud load balancer and tell that load balancer, hey, I'm trying to expose the service, give me an IP address. And that cloud load balancer will say, yeah, you want an IP address? Here you go, you're exposed to the public or somewhere else, so here's an IP address. If you're in bare metal Kubernetes or self-hosted Kubernetes, you don't have that cloud, cloud load balancer above you. So what do people use? Well, there's this thing called Metal LB that someone created, a community of people have created or have contributed to that does exactly that. It simulates a cloud load balancer. Um, and so when you expose something with a type of load balancer, um, then Metal LB will say, hey, here's your IP address and it'll give you an IP address from something either you specify or in a DHCP scope or a range that you specify. So anyways, long story short, there's two pieces there. One, don't install and run workloads on the Rancher cluster. I know there are ways around it. I know there are ways to do it. I know you could do it with, with a, a node port, a host port, one of the two, uh, and it might work, but it might lead to troubles too. So there's, there's that. And then two, if, if you want to expose anything in Kubernetes and you're running a full-blown cu cluster, not just a single node, cluster with etcd control plane and and user workloads all in one uh then then you uh want to will almost have to use um you will almost have to use metal lb so anyways uh hope that helps if not uh, i think like a few other mentioned um jump in the discord let's talk let's talk uh don bonito don bonito thanks for the fall appreciate it welcome uh central let's go i'm looking up here now central central mtk uh tim just found out you're from minnesota uh, glad to see another Minnesotan uh, making IT great. It's great. I'm going to go with IT, making IT great. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do live in Minnesota. I do now. I haven't lived here all my life. I'm not a native, but I do now. <laughs> Geeky Rand, Discord. Thank you so much. Discord, Discord, Discord. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, let's see. Skookal. Skookale. I've, I've, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I try my best to pronounce them. I will never give up, but I will, I will say something that doesn't even make sense. Anyways, let's see. Uh, I have two K3S server nodes uh, with Keep Alive D for HA. Now I have to roll out all of the rest. Workers, uh, rancher, and traffic, etc. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough. I've 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 tried to tackle that quite a few times. Um, I have all of my config. I have a weird configuration that I should have never put in place almost a year ago uh, that I, I still regret. So you're going down the right path. So congratulations. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome because. Once you get um, your load balancers or, or however you're load balancing, once you get those HA, then it's it's fantastic because you could take anything down, spin anything up, anything just works. So awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Odiv, uh, four, four 12 terabyte drives received from TrueNAS pool built. Received and TrueNAS pool. Yeah, just in time for TrueNAS scale. All right. Was a bit of a chore flashing the LSI controller. Uh, but seems to be smooth sailing from here, hopefully. Awesome. Congratulations. That's a good feeling. Four 12 terabyte drives. That's awesome. So you probably, I don't know what your configuration is, <laughs> uh, but it sounds, sounds fantastic. Um, like I said, just in time for TrueNAS scale, which was just released on uh, Friday, which was yesterday, right? Friday? Is it Friday or Thursday? One of those days. Uh, but soon. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Geeky Rant, easier to talk there too. I totally agree. Thank you guys for, for uh, getting people over to Discord if they need some more in-depth help, for sure. Uh, Mr. Byte, uh, I just finished assembling a rack and now I'm racking some equipment. Uh, then I have to crawl around in my attic to pull some Cat 6A. Awesome. I, 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 I envy you and not envy you at the same time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I envy you because you're building new stuff. You have a new rack. I don't envy you for crawling around the attic. I've done it a few times too. Uh, the way you get into my attic is right there through the office. There's a door there that goes up into the attic. Then there's a crawl space and you pop your head up there and you feel like you're like in some, I don't know, some scary movie. Uh, <laughs> and there's just insulation everywhere and uh, it's, it's not fun. Uh, unless you enjoy that kind of thing. I don't. I don't. I've done it three or four times. I've had to go up there. I'm like, yeah, this is the last time I'm ever going to do it. And I end up going there up there to fix or repull something again. I have said now for almost a year, I'm never doing it again. I'm pretty okay with not going up there. That means no fiber in this house or anything, but well, you never know. Anyways, congratulations. That's awesome. Cat 6A. Fan that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, more help with discord thank you guys uh i'm just i'm just clicking buttons right now not working on anything since i'm a bit depressed about the current situation but i'm glad to see to find a bit of distraction for the stream hey manny uh hopefully everything's okay manny 01 uh, don't know what the uh, uh well i could I, I mean i might know but um, i hope everything <laughs> is okay with you personally um, I know there's a lot going on in the world too, and it's easy to be super depressed about that too. Um, but yeah, I, I hope everything's okay with you. Uh, let us know if you need some help. Uh, let's see. Uh, T Genial. Hey, how's it going? Sorry. These, this, I, I kind of want to like tweak how this works down here, but I don't want to while I'm actually working. Let me just move it up here. Uh, let's see. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Uh, let's see. 43 degrees here, Seagor, lucky dog. Yeah, that's about 10, yeah, about 10 degrees warmer than it is here. Uh, it's coming though, it's a slow melt, here it comes. Uh, Rupert, hello, how's it going? Uh, OMG Alexis, here we go, started using Kate's, thanks for your videos. Hey, no problem, curious if you're using full-blown Kubernetes or, or K3S, I generically always refer to, you know, K3S or Michael Kate's as, as Kate's, as Kubernetes, because it, it is, it's just a distribution of Kubernetes. Its name happens to be similar, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, it's still a distribution of Kubernetes. Awesome. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, either I'm sorry <laughs> or you're welcome. <laughs> you seem to be generally excited about it and you're happy to be using it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to help. Uh, Sigor, practically summer here. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. I hear you. I hear you on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, audio versus background music, etc. Sounds all good in the clear. Thank you, Loken. I was talking about audio earlier. I've been having audio issues, and I I think I've worked most of them out. Uh, most of them had to do with one, a broken Go XLR, and two, Windows 11, and how it did audio. Uh, but I wiped, and I have a clean slate now, so I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
gun mode activated. Yeah, that's right. When when it went light mode, it was kind of it's kind of bright. It was kind of kind of bright, super bright. Dark mode was awkwardly dark. I I think they're aptly named. <laughs> uh, Gil oh, I'm gonna go for it. Uh, Guila, Guila M D Dep One. I'm sorry. Uh, hi from the Netherlands. It's been very sunny uh, today here. Really nice. All right, good man. Good weather. I'm I'm okay with good weather. Uh, let's see, man, you guys found those lights awkwardly dark. Um, I need to, I, that's note to self. I need to also remove these channel redemptions out of here, but then there's no way for me to know. So anyways, uh, let's see, uh, Kir, Kir Sunishi. uh, let's see. Hi, Tim. Are you still virtualizing your router? You, did you stay with PF sense after the recent license change? Um, I'm not. So um, so my primary router, no. Do I, I still have PFSense virtualized, but since I've shifted everything off and I ended up switching over to UDM Pro for, for lots of reasons, um, I still have it in my environment for testing. That's part of the reason why I always love virtualizing my router or any routers, because I can just you know swap it out uh, and double NAT things and test other things behind it. Uh, but no, no, I've seen a lot of churn about licensing, a lot of, uh, a lot of questions too about licensing um in general um so no i i haven't uh been tuned in uh I, i've seen tom lawrence from lawrence systems answering a lot of those questions and topics in, in videos uh but but i haven't uh, haven't been tuned in but i'm not virtualizing my router i am still using i i am using udm pro i've been using it for about a year and a half almost two years now and it's been it's been working out great except for like one crazy weekend <laughs> uh but but other than that i actually had to cancel the stream one weekend because of problems i had it was self-inflicted some of it but another was a bug in their their software with the way that uh, blocking works um let's see uh spider uh techno tim what cicd tool would you recommend for running and deploying to kubernetes yeah good question good question so there are two that i'm familiar with um that i i've been debating uh which one i'm gonna settle on so there's two that i'm i'm familiar with Flux and Argo CD. Those are the two that I see most people. Well, let's back this up a little bit. <laughs> um, so um, uh, you can, so I'll say this, you can deploy two Kubernetes without using uh, a, a different tool, right? Uh, and I do this all the time. This is how lots of, lots of uh, 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 workloads run right now, right? During your CI process, you build your, your code, you put it in a container, and then you tell Kubernetes to go deploy uh, something. Um, and a lot of people uh, use kube control during CI to say, hey, kubectl or kube control, deploy this deployment. Um, and then it tells your Kubernetes cluster, hey, I got a request to, to, to run this deployment or to, ins to install, quote unquote, this in deployment. Um, and then pull down that image, put it in uh, side of its, uh, 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 in the deployment, spin up some pods and, and go from there that all works that all works without any additional tools it's how I'll, that's how I, I still do it I, I i do it that way um lately i've been considering other tools like maybe you're talking about argo or flux where where you're saying hey instead of this this push model where ci is pushing uh uh out commands or pushing out uh, uh instructions to kubernetes to tell it to do thing you know turn that upside down and use a pull model and say, okay, well, I'm going to monitor Git repos for changes. And if those changes uh, happen to deployments or to whatever, you name it, um, uh, r run a set of commands or run some automation. And that automation would typically be, oh, I saw a change on, on whatever to this repo. There's a new container uh, or there's a new manifest in deployment. Uh, and that deployment now points to something else. The deployment has changed. I'll just put it there and then run its uh, own pipeline to then orchestrate Kubernetes. Super cool. Super awesome. Like I, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, I need to ch kind of change my paradigm a little bit. Like in software dev everywhere, like it's the push model. So I, I kind of have to wrap my head around the other model, which is pull. Anyways, long story short, the two that I know of are Argo City and Flux. Argo seems really new and really cool. Um, there are pros and cons with both. Um, there are features that each are missing uh, when you compare them, uh, but they're both trying to get feature parity with other because they don't want that to be the reason why someone switches CI tools. So uh, if that's what you're talking about, if not, just use kube control during CI. It's, it's super easy until the dust settles, but uh, I'll, have, I'll have something soon in my backlog. Absolutely, 100%. I uh, just need to get to it. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Gumshoe, Gumshoe Noir. Uh, hi, Techno Tim from Mesa, Arizona. Uh, hey, finally got my third Proxmox node renamed and joined a cluster uh, as the third node. Awesome. I, I too am running three nodes. It's, it's kind of fantastic. Uh, my Intel NUC was the last node I added to my cluster, and it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, not Snowman one. <laughs> Hello from ben, <laughs> Belgium. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Lickety Splitted, uh, finally set up a test, uh, Rancher RKA2 HA cluster. The steep learning curve is real. Yeah. Yeah. With RKA2. So, so there's RKA1 that exists and then there's RKA2 that's coming. That's kind of here that maybe is fully here. Um, uh, that's a, a new distribution of Kubernetes from Rancher. Um, that's targeting, they call it the government distribution. Uh, but really, it's uh, they're calling it that because they say it's you know it meets all the criteria that the government says some software needs to meet in order for them to use it. So it's aptly named the government distribution. Um, but RKE two is 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 pretty interesting. I, I know uh, 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 PC Geek was playing with it a little bit. That's kind of what I'm 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 waiting on uh, some of that dust to settle too before the new rancher stuff that I do. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 definitely different. It's it's different than anything we've done before. We've had RKE won the binary, and you could create clusters there. But RKE two is is way more advanced, uh, a lot more prescriptive, and you have a lot more you can do with it out of the box, like spin up a cluster automatically. You know, it's like combining K three S and RKE one together. I think that's what they're saying is like it it takes all the good stuff from K three S and all the other good stuff from RKE uh, tooling and cluster, you know, wide stuff, puts them together. So we'll see how it turns out. So yeah, I'm super excited about it. Super excited about it. Uh, damn Lola, <laughs> damn Lola, uh, Techno Tim, I've been watching your videos and you helped me with my home lab. They're really good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I really appreciate it. I, I really do. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, helps. <laughs> yeah, it helps to get feedback like that. So for sure. So my old ones are kind of, uh, kind of like, Oh my gosh, listen to me or look at me, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. You guys probably don't know any difference. So I appreciate it. Hey, your, your, your TX co thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Uh, I called out the other one. Um, let's see. Uh, really nice. Recently. Yeah. Piece of geek. That's what I was just saying it. You like it too. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. I think so. Uh, crack kitty. I'm late, but messing with my switches and VLAN still. Hey, I was just saying like you have, you have my permission to ignore everything <laughs> to get your network segmented with VLANs. Cause it's really, really important for sure. Uh, gumshoe noir. I have a Dell, uh, T610 currently with a single CPU. It's running TrueNAS scale. Nice. Uh, what would you suggest for a pair of CPUs? I intend to run Plex server with the GPU for transcoding. Uh, ideas for a pair of CPUs. Interesting. Um, well, I think you answered one of my questions. My, my question always when, when someone wants to beef up a NAS is what are you going to run on that NAS? Because NAS in general don't need uh, uh, a lot of compute. They don't need, in general, don't need a lot of compute unless you're going to run workloads. You'd mentioned one Plex, which is, is relatively okay. Uh, to run on a single CPU, depending on what else you're doing. And you said you're going to add a GPU to it too. So you're going to offload that encoding to the GPU. So the CPU doesn't uh, get pegged. Um, it just depends. Um, I, you know, I had an R710 for a while that had a pair of, I forget what, 2670s. I can't even remember off the top of my head. Um, but if you're looking for older, you know, so if you're going with, you have a 610, if you're going with older enterprise gear, I would I would definitely look at R720s. If you're looking for rack mount, that seems to be what most people will choose. Um, but really, um, you know, and if you're thinking about buying something newer or building something custom and newer, I would definitely look for something that's a little bit newer than that. Um, if you want to save on power, if it is going to be your NAS and only your NAS, I would go with something a little more efficient. But uh, it's it's totally up to you. If you're going to stay in that range of 710, 720s, there's, I mean, every every refurbished one you see out there have decent CPUs. It's usually multiple CPUs, both with lots of cores uh, and lots of RAM. Um, but uh, if you're going to go with something newer, then the world is kind of your oyster, really. You have so many, so many, so many choices. Um, I can send you a link to what I had as a 710, and I'm sure lots of people have done uh 720 builds with with lots of compute uh, but also i would just you know caution to make sure that's what you need that's what you need 
uh, because if it is your NAS, that means it's going to be running storage and most likely it's going to be running 24-7, 365. And so on that thing, and unless you're going to do virtualization on it and you're also going to do containerization now with, with TrueNAS scale, um, I would just be cautious about what CPUs you use and what platform you use altogether, uh, especially for something that's on 24-7. So I don't know if that helps. If you want direct links, I can send you links too, for sure. Uh, let's see. Is that a Windows pipe screensaver? <laughs> Included? No, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, back there, probably, I think you're asking, or in the background there. Oh, I, I know what you mean. In the background of the message. It's not. It's not. But I do like where you're going there. I do like where you're going there. This is just something I, like, whipped up, and I, I literally, it was, like, 15 to 20 minutes of, like, hacking at CSS to get this work. Because uh, I didn't want the default ones that were out there. So <laughs> pretty close. Pretty close, though. Uh, Mathney, good evening. How's it going, Mathney? How are you? Good to see you. Uh, it does look like pipes, though. It's not pipes. I promise. It's not pipes. I promise. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> nose, nose, yeah, nose picking would have been clipped for posterior. I know it would have been Salvarius. I know it was. I, I, I wasn't. I promise. Uh, not that I know of. I, I mean, I'm going to say no unless you show me a picture of me doing it. <laughs> There's been a few times during a video where I'm just like, I have a scratch and I don't real, realize it. I'm like, I hope people don't think I'm picking my nose. Kind of, kind of, kind of gross, especially when you're doing it in a video and, you know, people see it. Uh, Flowdash, upgrading to TrueNAS scale today. Any plans for the upgrade? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely have plans to do it. Um, I, to be honest, I so I I, I did my my TrueNAS core. So I went from FreeNAS to TrueNAS. I did that live on a stream. Then I realized midway through that's not a good idea because uh, a lot of my resources for OBS are actually on my NAS. And I was going to do that same thing again this weekend, but then I realized again that like all of my OBS uh, resources that you see on the screen, images, whatever, videos that are looping uh, are actually on my NAS. So I have to either pull them all back, do it local and I do it live, uh, or I just do it afterwards and tell you guys it went okay. Anyways, um, I am going to do it soon. Um, I do have, so, 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 so with my TrueNAS, uh, I'm running TrueNAS Core, I have it's still an upgrade from from FreeNAS. It's still the same one. It's rock solid. Um, you know, I run uh, uh, a couple additional services on there. Uh, I've, I've said it many times that I, I only focus on storage on there. Uh, but one thing I run is is S3, so or MinIO or MinIO. Uh, MinIO is uh, 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 an open source version of S3, so object storage. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's what a lot of the web uses to store files. Um, store individual files uh, and it's not um, and, and expose them through a web interface. So most, you know, S3 buckets you hear about are uh, on Amazon. You know, it's just a drop off location to put files that people can get to over the web. Well, I use that too uh, for a lot of things because a lot of things in my environment now are using S3 for backup. So Minio is an open source version of that. I run that on TrueNAS and I noticed that that's changed significantly uh, but that's how my my clusters get backed up. That's how my uh, uh, my Longhorn gets backed up. Like a lot of my 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 services that I run now depend on uh, Minio or Minio uh, to run. Anyways, that's changed on TrueNAS scale. I just want to be fully informed of what the changes are because I don't want to get in a situation where I'm upgraded halfway and now I got to like scramble to figure out what's going on. I'm sure it's totally fine. I'm sure they thought about it. I just need to educate myself on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm an early adopter, but not like alpha early adopter. Does it count as an early adopter if it's it's been released? I still kind of think it is. Anyways, it, it's coming really soon. I just, I haven't done it yet, uh, to be honest. Uh, I knew in my head, like uh, after it was released, like I need to complete this video. There's like no way I'm gonna like upgrade my NAS where the files live, <laughs> you know, uh, right before I release a video. Uh, but I just released it this morning. So this is a good stopping point to focus on more project stuff, which then influences what I create for the next week. And so just a cycle. Anyways, it's coming soon. Um, I might do it live. Who knows? Who knows? I, if I do, I got to redo my OBS. And that's kind of it's kind of painful. Actually, I found the JSON file where all the settings are and I can do it really quick. So maybe I will and I'll just restore it afterwards. So who knows? Maybe maybe next weekend. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, Geeky Rand, holler at me if you want ideas. Yeah, man, uh, I might bounce some ideas off of you guys uh, in uh, in Discord, for sure. I'm, I'm like uh, in between, in between which platform I'm going to choose. 
Uh, Flowdash, I also installed and configured NetServer on all three of my free reclaimed NAS. Nice. Yeah, NetServer, that, congratulations. That's like a feather in the cap that you get an honorary badge from me that says, like, I completed that because that one is that one's pretty tough and complicated. I still, ha I'm not going to lie, I still have weird, weird situations where NetServer just goes offline, like the service isn't starting anymore, so I'm going to have to put a watcher or something on there for it to cycle itself if it if it doesn't start back up because it's it's kind of a... It's kind of pain in the butt when it's not there. My 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 solve so far has just been like reboot the thing, but uh, I'm not I'm not going to keep doing that. Sigor, I've been working on rebuilding my home lab after I got a new Unify Wi-Fi 6 AP. All right, got a new access point. Rebuild the home lab. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I want to add Nessus and open open SCAP. <coughs> Sorry, let me grab a drink. Um, into my environment. Uh, does anyone know if there's any reason why I shouldn't put both tools on the same VM or can they run on the same one? Ooh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know enough about the tools. I mean, to me in general, I, I, I will, uh, if they're kind of doing the same thing, the only thing you have to worry about is ports. I mean, if, if, as long as they're not going to be serving or doing something on the same ports, I say go for it. <laughs> I say go for it. Uh, PC Geek sounds okay to me. All right. He's, he, he knows more about this than me then. Um, Sigur, I wasn't sure if they use the same interfaces or ports or not. Uh, didn't find a lot of tutorials, uh, for anyone using both. Yeah, I totally, that's exactly where I was going. As long as there, as long as there isn't a port conflict. And if there is, as long as there's, uh, not an, you know, a, an easy way to change it, I say, go for it, go for it. Uh, get, do it until it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> uh, Ace. Ace WD, uh, could you use your advice on one big project? I'm moving from Unraid to Proxmox uh, for more flexibility and HA. Uh, new to me hardware, uh, HP Pro Liant, DL360, G7, uh, one you host with uh, lots of specs, and then two are Dell, uh, R Dell, uh, Dell R230, one host, three gigahertz, quad core CPU, and RAM, four hosts. Nice. Um, nice. So uh, I. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> no, uh, I didn't see a question there. I'm sure it's coming. Uh, let's see. Geeky Rand, uh, what I ended up doing was open SCAP uh, via GitLab runner integration, basically using GitLab's to tell open SCAP or SCAP to run the scan. Nice. Nessus can be used at the same time, uh, but there are containers for both if you go that way. All right. A container first solution. I like it. I like it. So basically orchestrate that during CI so you know what happens every single time. I like it. I like where you're going with that. Um, currently running Plex, Sonar, Radar, Crusader, uh, Sab, NZBD in Unraid. Would like to run Rust, Factorial, Valheim, and other game servers and Docker containers in Proxmox and Rancher. Plan to eventually migrate the 32 terabytes of data from current Unraid host to a new 32 bay 100 terabyte disk shelf running in TrueNAS, virtualized, or bare metal. How would you distribute the compute loads across the four hosts so that each take advantage of the respective benefits? Game servers on three gigahertz hosts, Plex on high core counts, et cetera. Yeah, well, this is this is a, like an architecture question. Um, let's see. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, this, this is a bigger question. Um, if you're gonna do plain old Docker, which it kind of sounds like you are, and I don't mean to say plain old Docker, like there's something wrong with it. If you're, uh, let's say if you're not gonna do Kubernetes, and you're going to do Docker. Um, I would put the uh, I would put the services that required the most compute on the machine that had the most compute. <laughs> Sounds obvious, right? Uh, but what I mean by uh, if you have game servers, game servers typically require a, a lot of compute, a lot of threads. The more threads they have, the higher, and also the higher uh, uh, core count. The more threads they have, the happier they are. Generally speaking. Um, but sometimes uh, uh, they're also happier with uh, a higher uh, individual clock speed too. So if you, I think you mentioned one of them has three gigahertz where the other is 2.3. I mean, you might wanna look at your current load on, on that game server and say, hey, does it ever spike up? I don't know what measurement tool you're using, uh, but it, does it ever use a full core for a long period of time or multiple cores for a long period of time to where they're pegged? Um, and you might wanna kind of move them there. Um, and I, I, and you might run into this with Kubernetes too, because I have to kind of do some of this, right? Resource allocation and, and planning uh, for your for your workloads. I mean, I was just asking that in Discord the other day. Hey, anyone have a better way of doing this other than like looking at your monitoring and metric solution, kind of gauging it, you know, and eyeballing it and saying like, 
well, you know, over the last day or so, it's used this much RAM, it's used this much CPU. So I'm gonna constrain the resources to this. Um, you don't have to do that in Docker because it's just gonna use as much as it want to. Um, you know, in Kubernetes, you can set resource limits and resource requests. Anyways, um, that's that's a lot uh, <laughs> a lot of words about, I would, I would look at your current workload uh, and look at monitoring your metrics, if you have that in place, and do that same same calculus. You know, how much has this workload used over the last week or 24 hours or in a high load day uh, or in a low load day? Um, how many cores has it used? How much RAM has it used? And kind of allocate them that way. I would, I would, um, I would also pay attention to, I wouldn't overstack um, a lot of your containers on one machine because, you know, CPU and RAM is just one factor, right? Uh, disk is going to play a huge factor in a lot of this. Like, is there a lot of IO on the disk when these containers spin up or while they're running? Um, is that going to play a factor? And so what you want to kind of do is isolate noisy neighbors, <laughs> you know, the whole noisy neighbor thing. Uh, like, for instance, my GitLab runner, super noisy neighbor. When it spins up, it's pulling down containers, it's it's compiling code, it's throwing, grabbing files, putting it in, pushing it up. I mean, it's, it's the definition of a noisy neighbor because it uses a lot of disk IO, it uses a lot of network, and it uses a lot of compute, and it uses a lot of RAM. So what you want to kind of do is, you know, it's a kind of a Lego game. Like, okay, who's the noisiest neighbor? Kind of isolate them. If you have multiple, try to keep those on different, you know, hosts at least or at least different disks or spindles or however you're 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 doing your storage and isolate it there or you just or you just scale up and and get more iops more cores more ram more everything else anyways i probably asked you more questions than you asked but those are some things to think about and uh, you know there's there's no magic solution or formula um they're just things you have to take into consideration i mean network's another one i, I kind of mentioned on it there too um, but that's that's the game I play all the time. Um, you know, I have a few Docker hosts, Docker only hosts, where I, I do exactly that. Um, and and you know, I I, I I put them on physically different machines too, because I have multiple machines. Uh, but sometimes I don't even physically move them. I'll move them onto a different pool, uh, disk pool, um, if 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 they're noisy enough. Uh, but yeah, ho hopefully that helps. Uh, like, like I said, like any kind of metrics and monitoring that you have in place or metrics for sure are going to play a huge role. And you'll just have to look at those and, and make decisions um, and then monitor and then and, and see if what you did made an impact. Uh, HWD, would you do HA via Proxmox or through Rancher? Yeah, this comes up a lot. Um, so, so what I, so would I do HA through Proxmox or would I do HA Rancher? And I think what your question is boiling down to um, is, is my dog's barking, but, uh, would I, would I do HA virtual machines or would I do HA containers? I mean, that's kind of what it boils down to your question. And, uh, you know, I answer this quite a bit. Um, and I think this goes back to the whole cattle versus pets, you know, um, me personally, I don't have any HA virtual machines. I don't, I don't, uh, I have very few pets in my environment. I have uh, probably about three or four virtual machines that, that are on my pets that have care and feeding that I, I have to back up individually, that I have to monitor individually, that I have logs that I have to scrape and look at individually or re remote in. So a lot of care and feeding goes into these, these pets and they have names too. They have individual names for my server, even going further on this, this, this whole pets versus cattle um, um, metaphor. Um, but then I have cattle, which are all of my Kubernetes nodes that I don't even really care enough to even name them creative names. I gave them creative names, but they're dash 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, um, because in my head, they're all the same, right? They're just an engine. They're just a platform. They're just a, 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 a platform or, or an operating system to run my containers. And so then I have a Kubernetes cluster that deploys my containers wherever they want, wherever there's available space. That's why I was doing some resource planning uh, just the other day, was trying to set resource limits so they're not bouncing around. Um, but long story short, I, 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 very, I, I don't do HA uh, virtual machines at all uh, uh, for that reason, is the whole cattle versus pets. I just care that my services are up. I don't care where they're running. If one of my machines go down, I know that Kubernetes will reschedule those pods somewhere else and they'll spin up. Obviously, I got to take a look at them. I might have to rebuild a machine, which is very rare. 
I might have to reboot a machine, which is very rare. Everything's pretty solid with Ubuntu and K3S to where I rarely ever have to touch anything. Kubernetes just is Kubernetes and I deploy code all day long to my, <laughs> to my clusters and it just does what it needs to do. Um, and I'm not saying that there isn't a use case for, for, for HA virtual machines. There absolutely are. Um, but that comes with a, a ton of requirements too. Like, hey, you know, if you have a virtual machine that goes down, now you need to spin it up on some other, you know, uh, uh, Proxmox node. Hopefully you have fast enough storage and fast enough network that it can pull that image off of there and spin it up too. So anyways, um, there's definitely a time and a place for it. I, I don't use it. Um, depends on your use case. If you have a, something, a workload that cannot be containerized and not even that, you have a workload that can't be clustered itself, then it, it might be an absolutely great use case for it. But if you think of other services, DNS, Active Directory, I mean, you, you don't even have HA domain controllers, do you? I mean, maybe you do. No, you just add more do nodes to the domain controllers and you're saying you run DC promo. I don't know. It's been a while since I've been a Windows admin, but you know, you spin up a Windows server, you promote it to a domain controller and you have yet another domain controller. You know, you don't, you rarely think like, yeah, I better have HA on this virtual machine in case this virtual machine dies. It's, you know, have good backups, run more um, in its cluster, its node, you know, it, its cluster and it should be fine. So anyways, uh, but again, your use case and mileage may vary. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Dunkle Dan, uh, did you ever mess around with self-hosting email, Tim? Either way, any thoughts on it? Uh, this comes up a lot. And a buddy of mine at work, we, we were bantering back and forth about this, about uh, he, he was mentioning, uh, if you're watching, hey, we, this is the conversation we just had. We were talking, he, he mentioned that he wants to get totally off Google and I was, you know, and he mentioned Gmail and I was like, well, you could self-host your own mail and there is, there is, there is a solution out there. Um, but how, you know, how much pain do you want? And I, I mean that, uh, seriously, no, um, there are lots of solutions out there to host your own mail. I was even like looking at this one, it's called a, a Docker mail server or something very g generically named, but like has everything you would need to run a mail server talking like spam filters uh, all like it subscribes to every open source thing out there for mail and gives you environment variables to configure it and it looks really awesome it looks really awesome um and so i'm not saying that you shouldn't do that like if if you want privacy if you want control of your mail go for it go for it um i would recommend you know layering on some other services too to maybe help you out with spam or um, uh, uh, or, or, you know, some things you might have to consider too, is like your, your, your mail server IP isn't, is going to have a very low reputation unless you go through a proxy to send mail out. But then again, if you're doing it for privacy, then you're sending your mail through someone else. Um, there's a, there's a lot of things to consider. Um, and so for me personally, like, you know, I, even for me professionally, um, not me at work, but me as Techno Tim uh, having, you know, running a smallish kind of business. That's really what it is. You know, I, I, I fall back to, to just plain old Gmail. Um, and I could, I could self host a mail server myself and I have considered it. And I, I thought about doing it just for science <laughs> to figure it out. Um, and maybe I will. And it's, it's in my backlog of videos. Like we should do this and we should try it. Uh, so we understand it. And so if someone, um, you know, asks, I'll have a better formed opinion about it. But I go into thinking about like all the things that could go wrong. And maybe that's just the developer in me <laughs> just thinking way too far out instead of just doing it and having fun and letting it fail. For some reason, when I, when I set out to do videos, I'm like, this cannot fail. Like this, there has to be a success at the end. Cause I will just figure it out. And, and maybe that's the outcome of, of a, uh, running my own mail server at home. I just, it just worries me. I don't know why I get so worried about it. Not that I would lose the email. I just start thinking about spam or what if my machine was then used as like just a proxy that anyone can start sending mail through. Um, you know, I'm on a residential IP. What does that even look like? Is that okay? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's not okay, but, um, but I mean like not, is it okay with with, with the contract I have for my residential internet, uh, is it okay as far as like, will I even be able to send mail out? So I have lots of questions and maybe I should boost that one up in my backlog, but Uncle Dan, I, I would say go for it. Like if you, if, if that's something you want to do and you're into containers, that's the one I've been eyeing for like six months. It's, I think it's called Docker email server or something. It's, it's so generically named, but it's so perfect. It has about a thousand stars and has about every single 
bit of configuration you can possibly imagine uh, and using all open source software. So really cool, really cool stuff. Can't remember if it has a webmail client. I don't think it does, uh, but you would just connect to it uh, from any mail client using IMAP. Okay, let's see. Uh, Alexis, uh, starting out with K3S and moved to Kate's. Full-blown rancher setup, etc. cetera. Uh, using a few Unraid machines for storage and worker nodes. Nice to see it all working together. Awesome, you went full-blown Kubernetes. All right, I've, I haven't even done it myself. Awesome, congratulations, that's, that's so awesome. Uh, let's see, Sigor, uh, I didn't even know there were about there being containers. What do you recommend? I read up and I learned about GitLab Runner. Oh, you guys are talking about uh, security scanning. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Uh, ICAC, ICAC. There's a lot of prostate. <laughs> ICAC prostate. Uh, anyone try Proxmox with Merge FS and SnapRate? I I have not. Not me personally. Um, Let's see, T Genial, uh, trying to set up JFrog Artifactory, uh, Binary Manager, HA, wish me luck. Yeah, that that does sound interesting. So I, it's been a while since I've done anything with Artifactory, uh, but I am familiar with Artifactory and familiar with JFrog, a pretty cool product. It's a, it's basically an all-in-one artifact manager for all of your artifacts. I think that's why they call it Artifactory. Uh, so if you need to store node modules, uh, you name it, any kind of binary or even container, Artifactory can do that for you. It's 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 like it's like the mothership of of artifacts, and so I bet it's super confusing uh, and tough to configure. So good good luck on that, uh, Mathney. If I could suggest a way of changing uh, displaying messages and the messages on the right, so it scrolls. Yeah, that uh, that might not be possible. That that'll take two hands. I I totally agree. Um, I'll look into it, Mapney. I, I totally agree, um, but there's there's not an easy way to do it with this tool. And so it's it's either hide all of chat or just focus the one that's highlighted now. So, but yeah, for sure. Oh, I see what you mean because it's paused. Oh yeah, so I need to make it scroll. Hey, good. Oh, chat pause. Okay, let's see if that works. I see what you mean now because I had my thing over it. Yeah, good call. All right, well, we'll see. Uh, let's see, uh, cause I did scroll up. You got it. Oh yeah, it's scrolling. I see it out of the corner of my eye. Um, let's see, uh, PC Geek, I think there's a trial. Oh, you guys are talking, see, and then threads look weird in this other tool. Uh, let's see, I'm going down to here. Redneck Tech, <laughs> uh, currently working on a new bare metal server. All right, I'm going up here. New bare metal server, uh, trying to combine Ubuntu 2004 LTS with a 1U NVIDIA Tesla. S1070 GPU uh, from 2009. I've got the NVIDIA driver working, currently fighting the OpenCL packages. I could use some ideas for what to do with it after I get the hardware working. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's uh, part of the challenge uh, is, is getting it working. And then the second part of the challenge is like, what do I do with this now? <laughs> that's how I feel with a lot of stuff that I do. I, I feel like that a lot of the time. I remember like my whole, my whole life building PCs and servers or even just building new PCs, you know, um, build a new PC. I get it up and going. I reinstall everything. And I'm like, what now I can do everything I could do before, except for a little bit faster. And so I, I, I can relate. This is very specialized though. So bare metal server Ubuntu, uh, with Tesla's, um, I don't know. I mean the, the low hanging fruit, the easy thing is, Hey, do some transcoding run a media server do transcoding i mean that's definitely going to make your your gpu work depending on what it's transcoding it to uh, the other is just do some other transcoding with like tdr or something like that like scheduled transcoding to transcode lots of video files what are those video files i don't know whatever video files you have i have tons of video files because i create content that's video so i'm going to be working on that soon the other thing is like a lot of people, you know, AI or ML like that, that's always going to be something that people are going to throw GPUs at because they have specialized chips to, to, to process and compute uh, those types of workloads, which don't run so well on a CPU. Um, so that's, that's always a choice too. And it doesn't have to be like computer science, ML or AI. I mean, if, if you're running, you know, home security software, a lot of home security software can do, you know, on, on site face detection or object recognition using open source software. And you do it all in your home, uh, on top of hardware that you have. And they usually use, uh, some GPU, uh, to, to be able to do that. Like, the, the, you know, something from Nvidia, 
Um, there are some ideas. I, that, that's all I got because outside of that, uh, outside of like render farms, you know, transcoding on demand or transcoding, batch transcoding, um, and then doing AI or ML to do object detection on video as it comes in. Uh, that's, that's all I've got. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, really liking the zoomed in chat box uh, to see what Tim's talking about right now. Hey, thanks, Ace. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, PC Geek mentioned it to me, and I've, I'm not going to lie. I've seen it on Network Chucks and Tom Lawrence's, and I thought it was a Google specific thing. And because they would always have like the YouTube logo on there, and I was like, yeah, YouTube streaming is looking pretty good right now because they have this awesome, you know, chat message. And I, I never dug any further. And PC Geek mentioned it to me this morning. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to figure out where this comes from because I'm going to do it. Because uh, We've had this format for a long time, just uh, just trying to improve the tools and stuff <laughs> to make it a little bit easier because we've always had open forum here. Uh, let's see, uh, or come to Discord. Uh, thank you guys for that. Uh, let's see, DZ. Uh, hey Tim, just jumped in the stream and heard you talking about your MinIO deployment. Any plans to do a video on how you implement S3 in your stack? Yeah, um, any plans to do a video? This is kind of up in the air. Up until now, I've, I've been using uh, Minio or Minio on top of TrueNAS, and uh, you know TrueNAS it works on scale and and uh, and core, uh, but they have Minio built in, um, and it works there. And I've considered it many times to put it inside of Kubernetes. This is getting it gets kind of weird, like it starts blowing my mind because if I put my object storage inside of Kubernetes, then the 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 backing data for it would probably be my TrueNAS um through nfs or something else or i could do longhorn which would even blow my mind even more and then on top of that longhorn and kubernetes itself backs up <laughs> to minio which then would be in kubernetes which then still might be on i yeah i don't even which would be longhorn which then it gets it gets so complicated and so ever since i found out that TrueNAS supports it i thought okay anytime I need a storage call like okay i need nfs easy true nas need smb easy true nas need apple file system for backups easy true nas you know s3 is the one that is a little bit more complicated because it can be it can run anywhere really easily in containers and so since true nas supported i put it there and and the biggest reason why i put it there too is because you know i have a, a zfs pool there that's very large it can grow uh if it needs to um, and at the same time, it has better availability than anywhere else in my network as far as disk availability. So I have HA disks, you know, that's it's a RAID, ZFS. And so it was just an easy choice to put it there. When I go to scale, I'm going to kind of have to think about this again. So anyways, if you're not running NFS, there's an awesome container for it. Uh, I've considered it many, many times. I've considered running in my Kubernetes cluster. I've considered it running on plain old Docker. Um, but, but MinIO is, is, is fantastic. I mean, it gives you basically like open source S3 at home. So you can create buckets, storage buckets, and then serve out files from there. Uh, and it's a great target for backups because everyone's starting to use S3 for backups too. Cause you know, it's, it's S3, it's object storage. You just get the file on disk and it's fantastic. Uh, let's see, included no, my raid, uh, my unraid currently has 77K in it and a lot of running services, uh, and most of the cores are pegged most of the time. Ooh, I plan to upgrade to Threadripper 1950 right on. The cores should perform about the same as 7700K. I would just have way more of them. All right, yeah, yeah, good choice then. Yeah, more cores, more cores. Uh, no more DC promo. All right, yeah, you, you, I aged myself. All right, I aged my my Windows knowledge on on domain controllers. <laughs> Just run two DCs, one on each server. Oh yeah. Wait, run two? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought I thought you still had to run like the command to to promote a Windows server to a domain controller was DC promo. Maybe they don't use that anymore. That's what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it uh, goes way back. Uh, included in all, I don't like hosting my own mail. Uh, I use Tontotoa, I can't pronounce that, for personal and Google apps for work stuff. We have like 50 domains, one account, and set up to catch all. I like it. I like it. Uh, nice webmail client with Roundcube webmail. All right. Uh, Isa, Isa, no, Isa, Uh, hi, Tim. Thank you for your valuable content. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see, lickety split. Uh, what about a video covering on-prem email proxy so services can use that instead of having Gmail creds all over the place? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question too. 
Um, yeah, you could do that too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Gmail creds all over the place. Tell me about it, or or your app, your app passwords for Gmail to be able to even uh, authenticate to the uh, Google Mail. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, Crack Kitty, thank you so much. Uh, Lickety Split, mainly for notifications, reports, and such. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. That's you know, I, I have a couple email addresses. One is just dedicated to blogging. Just that uh, for things that are more important and more timely, I send them to Discord. So I'm using all the free stuff, you know, log reports uh, and bug reports and crashes go, you know, to one email on Gmail and uh, some of it goes in Discord. Then I have a private Discord server where it's just me and bots like it used to be uh, the good old days, uh, but just me and bots where it just logs out a lot of the things that are timely. And so I can just hop in discord, look at all of my services, see my uptime, see what's up, see what's down, see if something's crashing and get in, get out without even dealing with email. But, but yeah, for, for when you need something emailed to you, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, would, would be nice. Uh, let's see, uh, Don, that's why you go with AMD on Linux. Uh, it's a bit less of a headache. Yeah, yeah I, that's what I hear. I hear that. I hear that for CPUs and for motherboards, but not on the GPU side. So it's, it's, it's kind of backwards right now. Like Nvidia has really good getting better, uh, GPU su support for Linux. And I, I, I don't mean, uh, graphically or, or for playing games. I mean, for all their ML and AI support, uh, it's been, it's been super duper nice for sure. Uh, vlog chat, uh, just started using Unraid, uh, and it's been great. Yeah, I hear lots of great things about it for sure. Uh, Philip Price thought it's a hey, I have to join YouTube stuff. Only call you live. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thanks for being here. Welcome. Included Null. I've been trying to find an affordable CPU that performs uh, as well as the latest i9 or Ryzen in terms of single thread performance, but supporting more than 128 gigs RAM. It's very hard to find. Yeah, so I wish Intel and AMD would serve the markets. Uh, that need pure speed and lots of RAM and threads. Yeah, so included, no, I, I kind of, I'm there with you too. I've been debating my next workstation build and I've been looking at all the latest stuff from Intel. There are builds, and this is desktop class stuff. Um, there are builds that do support 256 gigs of RAM uh, and those motherboards are crazy expensive and so is the RAM itself too. I know you're probably talking about server, uh, but desktop class is, is, is getting there now. I think the 12th gen, uh, Intel ones can support up to 256 gigs, I think I saw, uh, but it's so, so expensive. Um, but Intel, they're still, they're, they're, they're hanging in there. They're not giving up and they got more stuff coming too. Uh, let's see, Gumshoe Noir. I just clicked on Techno Tim Discord invite, read the rules and clicked on the green chat box, but saw the one increment to one and uh, any channels, any ideas? Gumshoe. Um, let me know, because I thought I fixed that. I, I had a problem with that before. Um, worst case scenario, click that checkbox again. Um, but let me know. Uh, I thought I fixed that. I knew what the problem was. Uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, let's see. Um, MRX Extremely. Mr. Extremely. Uh, didn't know you were on Twitch. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a Pichu Prime. Uh, anyone asked him about his thoughts on TrueNAS scale? Uh, no, not I've, I've I've offered up a lot of my thoughts. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm so excited it's here. I'm so excited it's here for many reasons. Uh, one, I'm excited it's on Linux, and that for some might not mean anything, uh, but for me that means a lot because uh, one, now it has Docker and Kubernetes. I'll go into more detail on that with something else here in the future. Um, but two, it runs on Linux, so now I can use simple Linux utilities like, like, like my uh, <laughs> uh, my 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 Proxmox, you know, additional tools. I, I virtualize my TrueNAS. Probably not a popular opinion, um, but um, you know, having something that's FreeBSD inside of uh, TrueNAS just isn't. I mean, it does work. Um, and it works fine, um, but I don't get um, uh, a lot of the monitoring, the metrics, the uh, uh, even simple things like power on, power off uh, easily because it, it, it doesn't have the agent that you can install. The Proxmox agent um, or the QEMU guest agent um, isn't available on BSD. So, uh, so far, it, it's kind of a, a pain in the butt. So I'm super glad that they've gone to Linux for that one simple reason is that I can use the QEMU guest agent. And plus like it moving over to Linux, it's also now using KVM. Uh, and so it's it's adopting a lot of the Linux, um, 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 
you know, tools and services that have been there for a long time that they weren't able to easily use and adopt on FreeBSD. Uh, nothing wrong with FreeBSD, but man, going to Linux is, is kind of huge uh, for me personally. Um, and uh, I, I assume it is for a lot of other people. Now, will I be using all the features of, of scale uh, and really doing a scale out, like a horizontal scale out of storage? Most likely not, most likely not. Um, but uh, I am happy it's on Linux. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's my high level overview. Um, it's it's I'm super glad it's here. It's been a long time in the making. So I, I, I have to like kind of unwind my thoughts about what did I think about this when I heard about it a year and a half ago, you know, when I thought, oh man, it's a, and I looked at their release plan. I was like, that's not until, you know, April of 2022 or something like that. I was just like, that is so far out, um, but it's here. And so it's it's hard for me to go back and think, what was so different at the time when I thought about it? Um, and those were kind of the things. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, PC Geek, it's done in Server Manager now. Once you install Active Directory services, it will ask you to configure it afterwards. Yeah, for sure. The GUI piece. But DC Promo, I, I bet that utility still exists. It's probably PowerShell. It's probably PowerShell. I was talking about the CLI. But, yeah, maybe, maybe not. PowerShell. Yeah, there you go. Geek around, PowerShell. All right. That's exactly what I was saying. I'm sure there's a PowerShell command. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, it's it's bat CG. Oh no, not batch. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No batch. Uh, let's see. Uh, included in all. Uh, oh, what time? I've gone way over. All right, I, I got to wrap it up, guys, and I'm close to the end. Included in all. Uh, uh, twelve hundred twelve. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce these yet. This is the twelve nine hundred K. Max RAM is 128 gigs. Some Xeon W support over 256 gigs, but the single thread performance is still far below. Uh, what I am on the 12th gen i9 can do. Yeah, so I'll, I'll have to look. I thought there was, hmm. I was looking at Asus board for the latest, uh, uh, um, the latest Intel uh, CPUs. I thought that supported 256 gigs RAM. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. Um, let's see, uh, Kiki Rain. All right, folks, uh, <laughs> gotta walk the beastie great stream. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, Tim, your lights went off. Yeah, I, they went off because people turned them off. I have a new one called dark mode and a new one called light mode. Uh, and both are awkwardly light or dark. So eh, I thought I'd go for it. Spend those points. Hey guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for joining the stream. Thanks for being here. Thanks for throwing your comments. Thanks for sharing what you're working on. Um, thanks for everything that you've done. Uh, there were lots of follows, there were lots of bits, um, and there were, uh, uh, lots of subs and resubs. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any more questions, yeah, let me know. Uh, last one. So glad, uh, to see the Docker video going to Chunaz scale this summer with the huge build. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. No, no problem. Yeah. If you have a, if you have some time, check out that video. It's uh, it's pretty basic, but at the same time, if you need to do anything in Docker and build your own custom images, it's there and it's super easy. And if, especially if you want to build a web page, a static web page, and you want to put some content in there and create your own container, it's definitely there. So, so yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Again, thank you guys so much for all you do. Thanks for, for being here. If you have any more questions, you can hit me up on Twitter or hit me up on Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord already, you should definitely join the Discord. Just do exclamation point Discord and you should see it there. It's also like everywhere else. You can totally find it. Go to technotim.live, it's there. Um, if you're having troubles getting in, someone mentioned they were earlier. I have a feeling that might be this, this other bot that I use. If it's not working, um, ping me somewhere and we'll fix it. Um, but you just got to check the green checkbox to see you agree to the rule. So anyways, thanks a lot. I'll have something for you, hopefully, hopefully this week. Uh, and I'll definitely be back next week. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good rest of the weekend and take care, folks. Be good to each other. Take care.